Dr. Pamela Ruig, Extension Mount Quality Veterinarian for the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Today we're starting a new series all about using on-farm culture to improve mastitis treatment. In today's segment, we're going to discuss how we make the decision of whether or not to start a culturing program. Now we use on-farm culturing as one method to implement selective treatment protocols. And really, we never want to forget what we're trying to do. What we're really trying to do is base our treatment decision for mastitis on having a diagnosis of what type of bacteria is responsible for that infection. Now the use of on-farm culturing is just one part of implementing that selective treatment protocol, and we'll cover many of these parts as we work through this series. But in general, we've got to have trained milking technicians who know how to uh, identify and detect clinical mastitis. We need to have a severity scoring system in place where we can select the cases, the mild and moderate cases, that will benefit from the use of selective treatment. And then we've got to make a decision as to whether or not we want to withhold treatment for up to 24 hours while we wait to determine what our on-farm culture result is. Or in some instances, we may begin a short duration treatment and then make a decision to stop or change the treatment after we get our treatment decision 24 hours later. All of these components are part of a selective treatment protocol and we'll, we'll cover all of these as we work through this video series. The principle of using on-farm culturing is simple. We're basically going to use some very simple laboratory shortcuts to arrive at a fast preliminary diagnosis of what type of bacteria is involved in the mastitis infection. And on most farms, we won't make the decision to use an antibiotic until the diagnosis of the type of bacteria is made, which is usually about 24 hours later. The typical decisions that we make using an on-farm culture program would be to treat or not to treat. Those decisions are usually based on did any bacteria grow? Or is it a no growth case? Is the case caused by gram positive or gram negative bacteria? Or is it caused by a type of bacteria such as a chronic Staph aureus infection where antibiotics aren't expected to be effective? We also may make some other kind of sub decisions such as maybe we want to treat with a drug that is more appropriate for the type of bacteria we found or in some instances, after we learn the diagnosis of the pathogen, we may decide we want a short duration treatment or a long duration treatment. All of these decisions help us make better and more judicious decisions about how to use antibiotics on our farms. If you're considering the use of on-farm culturing to help in making mastitis decisions, I also have a few cautions that you need to be aware of. If you have a small farm, and by a small farm I mean if you're milking less than about 200 cows, you fortunately probably don't have enough cases of clinical mastitis to actually develop sufficient expertise in performing on-farm culture. Now you can still work with your local veterinarian to implement a selective treatment protocol on your farm um, by having on-farm culture performed perhaps in the local veterinary clinic. You should talk to your veterinarian about this if you're interested in doing selective treatment, but have a small farm. Secondly, you need to recognize that the methods used in on-farm culture labs are not the same methods as those that are used in real diagnostic labs. You still need a backup lab where you can send samples to get the diagnoses that you won't be able to make on your farm. And finally, make sure you involve your local veterinarian. Your local veterinarian should be involved in training, supervision, and interpretation of these on-farm cultures. Your local veterinarian is also a very important resource relative to developing your treatment protocols. So in this new series, we will be describing the steps that are involved in the successful implementation of on-farm culture. The videos in the series will describe how to set up a laboratory, what equipment you need, 
how to select the right media for your farm and the types of pathogens that you're expecting. We're going to discuss which cows are right to include in a selective treatment program. We're going to talk and demonstrate how to appropriately collect milk samples and how to do severity scoring. And then we'll get into the actual um, laboratory component of actually performing the on-farm culture. Throughout this series, we'll demonstrate how to inoculate the plates, proper incubation, and then how to read the plates and make a diagnosis of the proper um, pathogen. Finally, we'll talk about some of the things we've learned over the years on troubleshooting the use of on-farm culturing on dairy farms. Mm -hmm.